Hi friends. So today I am going to deal with the first chapter in class 10 physics that is light reflection and refraction. So before getting deeper into the chapter, let me introduce this chapter at first. What do you mean by light actually? Light is a form of energy which enables us to see objects clearly. Suppose you are entering a dark room. Will you be able to visualize the objects clearly? No, obviously not. But when the light is switched on, what can you observe? That very object you will be able to see clearly. It is with the help of light that we are able to visualize the objects. So let us now see how light is enabling us to visualize the object. Suppose, let us imagine that an object O is being placed over here. And let uh, I be standing over here and let this denote my I. How my I will be able to visualize this object? is that when a ray of light strikes the object, this ray of, light, ray of light gets reflected and it reaches my eye. It is in this way that my eye is able to visualize this object. Now, let us learn some of the important points regarding light. Light, as we all know, has its maximum speed in vacuum or air. What about the speed of light in vacuum or air? The speed of light in vacuum or air is the maximum and the speed is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. This is the speed of light in vacuum or air. Next, let us see how the propagation of light takes place. Whether light travels in a circular shape, elliptical shape or whether it is straight line or what. Light always travels in straight lines. That is another important point, point about light. Light travels in straight lines. Right? As you might have heard of, light can be light ray or light beam. So do you know what is the difference between a ray of light and a beam of light? Let's see. Now, let us learn what is the difference between a ray of light and a beam of light. So what do you mean by a ray of light? A ray of, ray of light means... A simple straight line representation of the propagation of light. This is a ray of light. And this arrow points towards the direction of propagation of light. While a beam of light. A beam of light means a collection of rays of light. That means a beam of light will be like this. So many rays are arranged together. Or in other, in other words we can call a beam of light as a bundle of adjacent rays. And this beam of light can be classified into three major categories. They are converging beam of light, diverging beam of light and parallel beam of light. A beam of light. Let us classify this beam. The first one is converging beam of light. The second one is diverging beam of light. And the third one is parallel beam of light. What is converging beam of light? Converging beam of light means the beam of light in which the rays which are coming from different points ultimately converge at a point. That means the rays from different sources ultimately come together. These rays move in the same direction and ultimately meet at one point and this is where they converge. This is the converging point and these rays are known as converging rays. And what can you observe about the width of the beam? Width of the beam means this will be the width of the beam. In the case of converging beam of light, the width of the beam goes on decreasing as the propagation of light takes place. Now let us learn the second classification of the beams of light and that is divergent beam of light. What do you mean by divergent beam of light? Divergent beam of light is exactly opposite of convergent beam of light. Divergent beam of light means the light rays from a single source or single point propagate in different directions. That is, in another words, we can say spread out radially from a point. Suppose this is the point from which the light rays originated and their origination will be in such a way that these light rays will be spreading out in different direction, diverging from a point. 
And what about the width of the beam? The width of the beam goes on increasing as the propagation of light rays take place. Now let us see the third classification of beam of light that is parallel beam of light. In the case of parallel beam of light, the rays of light will be parallel to each other in this way. And what about the speciality or what about the width of the beam? See, this is the width of the beam and what happens to the width of the beam as the rays proceed forward? Is there any change? What can you observe? There is no change in the width of the beam as the rays or, or the, as the beam proceed forward. This is about the classification of beams that are convergent, divergent and parallel. So, in this section we are going to learn about reflection of light. What do you mean by reflection of light? Suppose you are throwing a ball on a wall. What happens? The ball bounces back. Similarly, when light strikes a surface, a smooth surface, the light bounces back. That is, reflection of light means the bouncing back of light to the same medium on striking a smooth surface is known as reflection of light. Let us visualize this reflection of light. How can we Diagram diagrammatically represent reflection of light. For that, light should fall on a smooth surface. So now let us draw a smooth surface. So let this be our smooth surface. And we are representing this smooth surface by these dashes. And let this be the smooth surface on which the light will fall and this side of the surface will act as the reflecting surface. So we have first drawn the smooth surface. Now let us make a ray of light incident on this smooth surface. A ray of light, any one ray we are considering and this ray is incident on the smooth surface. This is the point of incidence. And this ray is known as incident ray. While this point is known as the point of incidence. Now on striking this point of incidence, what happens? This light, light ray get reflected. Reflected along in the reflected to the same medium. This ray is known as reflected ray. This is how the phenomenon of reflection is taking place. Now let us draw one normal to the point of incidence. Normal means what? Perpendicular. Let us draw a perpendicular to the smooth surface which is passing through the point of incidence. Let this be the normal to the point of incidence. This is known as normal. So we got two angles here. This angle is known as the angle of incidence I or angle I. Angle of incidence means what? The angle between the incident ray and the normal to the point of incidence is known as angle of incidence. And another angle we are having right here and this is known as angle R or simply R or angle of reflection. Angle of reflection means the angle between the normal and the Reflected ray, sorry, reflected ray. This is about how the reflection of light is taking place at a smooth surface. Next, let us learn what are the laws of reflection. Laws of reflection. Laws of reflection. Let us now learn about the laws of reflection. There are two laws of reflection, the first law and the second law. The first law of reflection states that the angle of incidence, angle I, will be always equal to the angle of reflection, angle R. That means this angle will be always equal to this angle. This is the first law of reflection. And let us now see what is the second law of reflection. The second law of reflection states that 
the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal to the point of incidence these three things incident ray reflected ray and the normal to the point of incidence all these will lie in the same plane this is the second law of reflection this is all about reflection and its laws next let us learn what are reflectors reflectors means an object which has the ability to reflect light one of the best known reflector of light is silver this is a key to know that a silver mirror is one of the best known reflectors of light next let us discuss one of the special cases the case is a ray of light is incident normally on a smooth surface then how about the reflected ray let us diagrammatically represent this case this is the reflecting surface a smooth surface and we are given that a ray of light incident normally that means through the normal so for that we have to draw the normal at first let this be the normal to the surface creating an angle 90 degree we are given the rays incident normally that means this will be the incident ray then how about the reflected ray and what will be the angle of reflection so we all we have already already learned the law of reflection first law of reflection that is angle i will be always equal to the angle r for that we need to find what is angle i then we can determine the angle r and hence the reflected ray so what will be the angle of incidence or angle i what is actually angle i angle i means what the angle between the normal and the incident ray here what is the normal this is the normal this very line is the normal and incident ray also is the same line so this is the normal and this is the incident ray what is the angle between the normal and the incident ray It is of course equal to zero degree. Therefore, angle I is equal to zero degree. Since angle I is equal to zero degree, angle R, which is equal to angle I, in turn will be equal to zero degree. Since angle R equal to zero degree, what does that mean? The angle between the normal and the reflected ray will be equal to zero degree, which means that the reflected ray will be retracing its path. That means the incident ray and the reflected ray will be acting along the same line. so this is the reflected ray and the angle of reflection is 0 degree this is the case where the incident ray is incident normally on a smooth surface then the reflected ray will be retracing the path and the angle of incidence angle of reflection both these will be equal to 0 degree thank you